So like, like really small children. And one of them asked me, uh, Gaza, what do you think? What are aliens doing at the moment? And I was like, this is the best question. I mean, Talks with Tim or Rick Deshaw. Today we have Goda Ray B. De. Was that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. From Lith Lithuania. How do you how do you spell your country? Lithuania. Lithuania. Yeah, it's the city I'm in at the moment, and Lithuania is the country I'm from. Yeah. So you're having your own critical thinking science show on TV. And yeah. you're also writing a children's book at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. What is that about? It's about the search for extraterrestrial life. And uh, it's a um, um, science tale for kids. Uh, and my main characters are real scientists working in the field. Uh, people like Jill Tarter. Uh, who founded the SETI Institute and who was like one of the pioneers in the field. Uh, Charles Alachi, who used to um, be the director of uh, NASA Jet, Pro uh, Jet Propulsion uh, Lab and is like has been leading like many cosmic missions. And it's, um, so it's a tale about what do scientists know about the possibility of extraterrestrial life and intelligence because these are two different things mm -hmm. and uh, their philosophical insights about for example what if we're alone at the end of the day you know what if we if it turns out that we're the only intelligent or alive beings in the universe so yeah it's uh, uh yeah <laughs> interesting yeah that that is the reason we we actually hit up on the internet a while ago because i'm also searching for uh extraterrestrial life so interesting yeah putting it together in a, in a children's book will be quite quite interesting um when is when is this gonna come out or how how far are you in the process? Hopefully, hopefully by the end of the year, because um, uh, it turns out it's not easy to write a book. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm joking, of course. I never thought that it's easy, but um, uh, when I started writing it, it's just like you're never 100% sure that this is the way you want it to be, like the passage or or well it's it's difficult and i have never written a book so it's complicated for me and i'm a i'm not a, a fiction writer i'm a journalist and it's a little bit of a challenge for me to let my imagination go right, rather than sticking to the facts and you know information so hopefully um, i'm gonna be a published writer by the end of the year. I'm done with the with the storyline, and now we are working on some details uh, with uh, with editors, like improving some parts who are not that are not as uh, I don't know that needs improvement. So uh, yeah, so uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm super. Uh, I'm I'm feeling a little bit spaced out because I'm just. It's been a weird day. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. And uh, what was yes. the original? What was the um, decision to make it a, a children's book? Are you like trying to inspire young people and children to get into the the space theme? Because I think it's important to get um, a new generation like inspired by yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, as you uh, correctly stated, um, every single uh, scientist that uh, I ever interviewed during my, I guess it's now 13 years of working as a journalist, all of them said that it's super important to 
uh, spark uh, the motivation to explore science and the cosmos in children. And I've been always afraid to work with children because they are the, on one hand, they are the best audience. On the on another hand, they are the worst audience because they have the most fundamental questions and you feel vulnerable while being in front of them because you have to admit that you don't know all of the answers and this yeah. takes some getting used to, you know, you have to uh, learn to say, oh, well, I don't, I don't have, sorry, I don't have the answer for this, but if you give me some time, I can follow you up with, uh, with the answer. I just need some uh, additional info on that. So cool. it's just, I don't know, but the why, yeah. So children, they are, I mean, um, for example, uh, uh, a few weeks back, I had a lecture on search for extraterrestrial life with uh, some children, and they were like children up to, I don't know, seven years old, like, like really small children. And one of them asked me, uh, Gotha, what do you think? What are aliens doing at the moment? And I was like, this is the best question. I mean, I and I I was like I was lost for a moment. I didn't know what to answer, and I was like, uh, Jesus! I wish I had the answer for this question because it's the most amazing question, isn't it? What are they doing at the moment? I mean, <laughs> I wish I knew. <laughs> so I don't know. Cool. Then. So I'm curious. Um, when you inspire like young people, what what who was the most inspiring or influential um, person in your life growing up? My grandpa, uh, he wasn't a scientist. He was just a, the best storyteller that I've ever known. He always had stories to tell and he somehow encouraged uh, the curiosity in me like to explore and to get to know how things work because he was like, oh, so this is a, um, a phone. I need to know how this phone works. How does it operate? Something like that. And he was like always working on something and um, uh, yeah, detail by detail, learning new things. And uh, yeah, he was my greatest inspiration. Unfortunately, he died a year and a half ago but uh, uh, but the the impact that he left on me is still like so many lessons to, to learn so many things to explore it's amazing <laughs> he was really beautiful so yeah sounds like he was an amazing guy yeah cool he was trust me Thank you, you would have loved him <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure thank you for sharing uh, all of this and um, where can people find you online? Where can people like follow you? Do you have social media or the, what is the website of your, of your TV show? And where can people hit you up on the internet? Uh, mainly Instagram and Facebook, but just use my name and surname. Uh, uh, my show is called the, uh, in Lithuanian, it's radical usmal sumas. In English, it's radical curiosity. Uh, but it's, um, I mean, some of the interviews are in English and uh, they have subtitles in Lithuanian. So uh, for the English uh, speaking audience, they can understand. Uh, but, uh, but still most of the shows are in Lithuanian. So I guess this is only, um, uh, this is gonna work only for, for for the Lithuanian audience, but the book is gonna be published in English. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah, uh, just by my name and surname, it's easy to find me. <laughs> cool. I'm gonna hit all the links up and put everything together. So, now the yeah. final three questions I ask everyone at the end of the show. Nice. First one. What would you do if you could be invisible for 24 hours? 
Wow. <laughs> that wow. Um, what I would do if I could be invisible for 24 hours, I don't know. Uh, I would. Wow, that's a good question because I don't feel like clothes are somehow limiting me. <laughs> so, or that my appearance or that me being visible is limiting me in any way. And I don't, I honestly don't think that I'm, I think that I'm doing all of the things that I want to do while being visible. So, so I, I don't know, I would just do the same things and maybe I would uh, play some pranks on my friends, <laughs> like uh, lifting a, you know, a cup and like, like oh, oh. or playing strange sounds uh, <laughs> or, <laughs> or I don't know, I would probably just be pranking people. <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> so you wouldn't change that much. That's good. Yeah, because I I love what I do, and I said I don't feel like any like me the part of me being visible is I don't know limiting or restricting. <laughs> I don't know. Cool, interesting answer. Yeah. The second question is getting a little bit more into our um, like obsession with with extraterrestrials. Do you think? Mankind should be an interplanetary species, and do you think they're gonna make it? Uh, like the mankind should be into. Um, I would hope so that we would make it, because uh, I am very much looking forward for the discovery uh, of the extraterrestrial life or intelligence. I don't know. Um, I used to be a little bit afraid uh, that what if, like Stephen Hawking used to say, what if they found, found us, not we, you know, that we would end up like uh, Native Americans yeah. dead <laughs> or I don't know, uh, in some kind of alien zoos. <laughs> but uh, I think like, I guess that was Stephen Pinker uh, who is, uh, how to say he is working on this idea that um, civilizations go in the, like through different kinds of evolution. It's like we are going now of technic through technical evolution, so to say, mm -hmm. and that one day we would go through cultural evolution as well, and we would evolve as species, species, and that would mean that we would get rid of our aggression of our um of our i would say limitations of trying to destroy uh, everything that is uh that we can so to say that is we think weaker than us or can't can protect themselves so to say and i think that if there's extraterrestrial life and if if the, these uh, civilizations, so to say, if they are millions and thousands of years more evolved than us, they would probably be better than us as well. And they would teach us how to be better uh, because, and uh, they would care maybe their knowledge because they are already past the stage of being aggressive and wanting to conquer everything, the cosmos, whatever. So I think that we have uh, we have to explore space. We have to find out if we're alone in the universe. Because if we are, then it means that we are very privileged, and we have such a huge responsibility not to mess this up. You know that we're alone, and we are the only like this kind of life in the whole in the entire universe. This is so much responsibility. And it means that we have so much work to do that because uh, now we are like, we've done so many mistakes with our planet, with uh, our 
approach to everything, we should correct it if it if it turned out that we're the only life in the universe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. If that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, that answers absolutely. I'm I'm with you on that. Yeah. So yeah. the last the last it's not really a question, the last one, but you have to like um complete the sentence in in your yeah. So the sentence yeah. begins with Goda is on the search for radical curiosity. Cool. The source of radical curiosity, maybe. <laughs> All right. That was it. Thank you very much.